tis the season to take NIDA tests. So I've been having a lot of technicians reach out to me asking, what should I study for my level two? Or what should I study for my level three? Or what should I study for my level four? And I promise you 100%, the NIDA ETT right here is exactly where you need to look, okay? So it's going to break down everything in this. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna show you where, okay? This is the NIDA ETT. I'm not gonna go through everything here, but I do wanna go over some uh, and highlight a couple things here, right? It says typical duties, and this is for a level one technician. This is not someone who takes an exam. Look, you are responsible for yourself. That's the intent, okay? That means that you are capable of being safe by yourself. All right, that doesn't mean that we can throw you in a substation and you can identify everything that's potentially hazardous though, all right? So that's a level one, there is no test, there is no exam. For the level two technician right here, okay, this is still the NIDA ETT, um, with this, the typical duties right here, understands hazardous electrical energy and control procedures. That's probably one of the major functions of a level two. All right, level three, it is right here and it says supervises levels one and two routinely and moderately complex projects and then record uh, uh, record keeping safety of others and switching procedures and evaluations right that's your job as level three and then level four is the next one the last one right here and that's going to say supervises large projects multiple crews works independently uh, more complex investigation and tests. Now, I'm going to say that this says it works independently, but if you read the, the, the actual MTS and ATS, it tells you that a level three is the minimum required level that is required to be on a job. So every job must have a level three or higher technician on it, and a level three is intended to supervise others, okay? So that means that you shouldn't be on a job as a level two by yourself if you're doing need a certified work. That's what the book says, all right? Your test will be shaped around these responsibilities, okay? So when I have someone ask me, hey, what should I study as a level two? Um, I would recommend an FPA 70E. I would recommend basic AC and DC theory. It, that's exactly what it says. Typical activities, visual mechanical inspections, basic tests data collection, test for de-energize, right? They wanna make sure that you are safe enough to be a safe, tech, safe technician and that you, you can do some basic functions, okay? You should understand what volts, ohms, amps are, maybe do some basic calculations. You should understand how your mega and your ductor are basically working, okay? Level three, you're gonna be supervising lockout control and making sure teams are safe. So you need, you need to prove that. All right, so I'm gonna scroll down here and what you can see is his safety, right? This is a level two certified block. This is everything that you might see on your exam, okay? This is all of the references in which to find it. If you're like, hey, what should I write, read or study? It's all right here. I mean, why ask people? Just look in the ETT. If you are a NIDA certified company, you have this document, get it. And so uh, right here in FPA 70E, uh, right, be able to recognize, right? So, I, you know, if you're a level two, skim the NFPA 70E. If you're level three, I recommend you read it, okay? It's not too long. Um, if you're level, going for level three, I recommend you read the B as well, the NFPA 70B. Now, we're still on level two. This is table two, right? And it says uh, electrical testing fundamentals and theory. This tells you all the stuff that they, they expect they expect you to understand how to do. Look, look right here. I tell people all the time, you need to know basic AC and DC theory. And nine times out of ten, they think, oh, I know Ohm's Law. That's not what this says. AC and DC circuits, right? This is it right here. We scroll up. It says basic tests and data collection. In electrical engineering, basic Tests is AC, basic AC DC theory is right here. Calculate single loop AC circuits with RLC components. What does that mean? How do you calculate inductors and capacitors on an AC circuit, right? Single loop, right? And just to really nail this home, this is a little resistor and then an inductor and a capacitor. This is, the, this is exactly what that question says. 
I give you my, my farads, and I give you my inductance, right, which is going to be in Henry's, and I give you my resistance. In ohms, you should be able to calculate everything, right, if I give you a voltage as well. So that's what they're saying. Um, that's that's a basic AC theory right there. So don't think that just Ohm's law, all right? Um, insulation testing, quite a bit of things. This book outlines every single thing. We're still under level two, under component testing, right? A lot of this is going to be basic stuff, all right? Uh, and if you are a level three or four, you can look at this and you can say, yeah, that's that's kind of basic, right? They're a little vague, but uh, but but pretty basic. Um, we're still on level two, and then we get into level three certified technician. As you notice, these are going to start getting more and more critical, and they're going to be more in depth. They're going to ask more of you. So that's what the level three is, and this section is quite a bit longer, okay? And then we go into level four. Starts right here under safety, all right? So that's all of them, and then and then you've got the this is the, the certification requirements by your employer. So if you're going to take this test. And you're like, I don't know what I should study. Well, I mean, if you're going to take the level four test, why don't you just look right here? And if you haven't studied fiber optics, it tells you that you need to know fiber optics. Okay. If you don't know how to identify different types of fuses, it says right here, you need to know a different types of fuses. So if it, I mean, quite often than not, if you want to succeed in your career, you have to put the investment in it. And this is the investment. So just read it. It's not long to identify what you need to do and then go find that respective um, literature. And then just as a uh, last little point to drive it all home, if you go to the beginning of each of the NETA books, it tells you what the no normative references are for each of the tests. So if you're like, I don't know, it's talking about um, you, know, f f you know fuse testing or VLF on cables, right? And I don't know what standard that is. Well, if you go to the beginning of the NETA book, it tells you all what all the references are for all the tests. So now you know where to find all of them. So that's the last thing I'm going to say on that. So hopefully that helps everyone, and I look forward to seeing the comments below. Thank you.